Okay, now we're recording for people that like to watch us talk. Yeah. If you want to watch my mouth move and watch Anna's mouth move. Um, that's what we have to Just do. put it on put it on YouTube. Yeah, you can put it on time and a half 1.5 and just let it play Boom. in the background. Yeah. While you're doing while you're playing. I don't know. What are you doing? It's computer solitaire? What do the kids play these days? I, I don't know. I'm you know, what? I'm damping up coffee all off of my console here with with a with a piece of you need paper. To be careful because remember the meat juices. I spilled meat juices on my computer and broke a $2,000 computer and Meat juice was my I was in very much trouble with my husband. Uh, Anna, I wanted to speaking of meat juice. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to start off and I'm going to talk about vegans. Okay, just from the top of the show. Can't wait. Uh, for no uh, apparent reason. As you know, you know, my Twitter kind of stays, you know, kind of status quo. Yeah. And once every other week or so a vegan will find their way onto my site and try to convert right meat eaters and it, sure. it, it's a fruitless effort now here's the thing twitter's not the environment for that by the way right you know it, it's it, it's one of these things vegans are like left wingers and i'm not talking about democrats here right i'm talking about like people that fell off the left wing vegans <laughs> are like that okay and here's why i'm, I'm gonna do the fringe is what you're saying fringe yeah, it's just a fringe and here's why here's what I'm talking about. The whole time Trump was president, mm -hmm. right? There was a whole bunch of people on the left going, not my president, not, not my president, not my president. No, 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 so no. Just so you know, I'm absolutely horrified about where this is going, but go ahead. OK, no, I, I don't do <laughs> po politics. I'm just making an analogy. Here. Despite what you just but, said, yes. But now we have a Democratic president, President Biden. Right. Right. And as you know, I don't care who's president because right. I've always said it because it doesn't matter, guys. President has never a made a difference in my life. It, it, it just has, you know. And now we have Biden. I've never heard any of the super duper right wing wackos. I've never heard one of them say, not my president. Oh, oh, oh. No, they say it all the time. Oh, they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But in see, fact, they say he's not the real president and Jim Carrey is playing him. Oh, really? Yes. It's a whole thing. Yeah, but that's super duper wackos, right? What are you talking about? We're talking about the fringe. Or are we talking about the fringe? Yeah, the guess, fringe or the well, entertainment? The fringe well, on the minge, baby. Right. OK, so I, I get you know what? I guess my analogy just doesn't work here. It doesn't though. work because both sides. Coo -coo. Because you see, I don't see carnivores or meat eaters. You don't have to be a carnivore. You just have to be you know, an omnivore. I never see them you know, trying to espouse what they're doing onto anyone else. If someone says to someone like, um, oh, they do kind of they do. It's a, it's OK. They're they're a little less. Well, fuck, Anna, you just became so well, here's it. I mean, everything. <laughs> no, I no, I'm not trying to shoot on. you down at all. I just feel like there are bro splainers on all sides. Yes. But what I'm talking about is not bro splaining. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about someone who just learn that if they ate low carb, they can lose a lot of weight <laughs> and they're telling. OK, that's what I'm talking about. OK, you I'm know not, what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those people. Understand. Okay. OK, I'm not talking about the people that. Oh, my God. Why didn't it look like, people call me and they're very upset and they'll go. Listen, uh, I heard you on Mike Rowe. I heard you on Adam Carolla. I heard you somewhere else and I came on. My wife and I decided to do this six months down the road. My A1Cs are normal. I'm off of metformin i haven't ordered lipitor months blah 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 everything right. is perfect and i go great 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 and then they get mad they go why didn't my doctor tell me this how come my doctor didn't put why me didn't my yeah. doctor know this why didn't the nurse say something why didn't the dietitians i pay why 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 and the answer is i don't know why and those are the people out there proselytizing to their family members and friends because they're looking at their family and friends going Hey, listen, it's, it's kind of like people that become a Scientologist or like a wacky religion person and go, I have a secret. <laughs> you need to know. Except this is a real secret that they need to know. And yeah, they do proselytize. They become wackadoodle for a minute because they can't understand how between their 18th birthday and maybe their 40th birthday, they became the sickest person on earth eating the standard American diet. Right. Right. If it was so bad for you, why would the FDA make it legal to sell it? That was the thing that always went through my head. And these people are always saying to me, 
why it, Adam Carolla put it best. He said to Dr. Drew one time on his show, he goes, why did some idiot who grew up on the bayou have to explain to the whole world that we were eating the wrong way? Why didn't my doctor know this? Right. right? And he's got a point. Why did I have to come from the bayou and go, hey, this is what's going on? Why is this not just being preached from the mountaintops, right? Every sitcom I saw in the 70s and 80s, the joke was, yeah, I'll, I'll have the porterhouse steak with a side of cardiologist. And then they would run a laugh track. I can but, feel but, my arteries clogging as we speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was sitcoms, right? Right. All right. So that's the whole deal. So, okay, calm down. Cal okay, calm down. Okay, but you understand what I'm saying, right? So I get those people wanting to proselytize to family and friends because they're looking at their numbers. They don't have um, uh, triglycerides in the 400s anymore. They're down in around 80 or 70 or 60. Right. They, they've learned this. And, they, and the other thing they learn is the more they do it, the better they get, right? It's not like they just get a little better for a little while and it stops working. The, the more they do it and the harder they do it, the better they get, right? Some people struggle. And what they struggle with, Anna, is, okay, I've lost 40 or 50 pounds. My A1Cs, they're getting down to normal. I'm coming off of Lipitor. I'm coming off of Metformin. I'm coming off. I don't have sleep apnea anymore. I, you know, I can almost, maybe this summer I can wear a one piece. Last summer I couldn't even consider, you know, this kind of thing, right? And then they go, wait a minute. Wait, a, I, I didn't think of this. Can I ever have ice cream again? Can, it's summer. And I want to have ice cream again. Everybody yeah. else is having a daiquiri at over at the, you know, the Mexican, all you can ladies night, all you can eat and drink daiquiris and what is it? Margaritas. Margaritas. Yeah. The whole thing. Right. So, and then they call me and they'll go, Hey, Vin, I'm doing great. Great. That's great. Great to hear. That's the two phone calls I get. Well, three, I get, Hey, I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. I'm doing ABC and D. I get the one where people go, Hey, I lost 60 pounds and it's kind of leveled off or they'll use the diet term plateau, which drives me nuts. Or they will say, well, what do I do now? I'm losing weight. I feel great. You're telling me I can never have gelato. I'm going to Italy with my family, right? I love that they, they pay you to, t to say that to you. You know, my best friend, Kim, who I talk to, you know, we do consults and I see her on Twitter mm -hmm. all the time, right? And uh, Kim, you know, she works her ass off. I think she works like two or three jobs. I think she mm -hmm. told me she's got like two or three, like she... This is one of those people she hustles. I got a feeling that Kim is close to my age because she hustles, right? right. She's not sitting on her ass. And she works a night job and she works this job. She works all these jobs. And she's taking a vacation for the first time in like forever. And she goes, hey, my friend and I were going out to New Orleans, right? And, you know, there's all this great food. What, what can I do, right? And it's like, Kim, give me a phone call. Well, we got to talk. A beignet about. made out of cauliflower. Yeah, get the cauliflower beignet, Kim. Get get the arrow. Ask, go, go walk into Cafe Dumont and ask for the cauliflower beignet. Yeah, go, go get your muffalata from Central Grocery. Tell me you want the arrowroot bun. I want the, yeah. Watch what those wops do, too. I want the cloud bread muffalata. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I want an etouffee mug cake. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I want fried catfish, but I want the fake version. I want the vegan version. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at any rate, I get it. People go, oh, wait, I'm doing this. It's working, but yeah, I'm having trouble. Right. And so I get that phone call. But going back to the left and the right, right? <laughs> like you have your wackos on the left, wackos on the right. And we Here have. I am stuck in the middle with you. I, I just reminded myself of a song we have to play at the end of the show. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at any rate, um, vegans are a little different. Because they're not just happy to proselytize and go, hey, this is working for me. They want to come in and espouse their wackadoo religion on you. And that's called evangelism. Yeah. They, they, it's not they, just proselytizing. It's oh, an they, evangelical they, yeah. way of we need to convert the masses. Yeah. And, and they come in and they, you know, they're batting their eyes, half eye closed. No, you don't understand. You guys are stupid. We're so smart. And the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There was a woman this week and she, you know, I, you know, I, you know me, I like to bat them around for a couple of days. I don't block <laughs> I do what I yeah. do what my cat Pip does outside. You know, I'll bat, you know, the, the mouse around and then I'll kill it. 
Um, so that's what I like to do with vegans. I'll, I'll just let them because I like watching it. Sometimes it makes it fun for me. Sure. And so I paid attention for two days. And on the second day, she said that in countries like Italy and Spain, they're plant-based. They, they're largely plant-based and they barely eat meat. And um, wait a minute. I've been to those two countries, one of them significantly more than the other. And you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a piece of meat in Italy. Right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I said, I beg your pardon, but um, I've spent a significant amount of time in Europe. And I can tell you that they eat a lot of meat in Italy and Spain. And she was like, right. oh, you think because you went there once, you know everything about so I didn't I didn't want to get into the oh, I didn't go there once conversation. I just let it hang. Right. I didn't do anything. I always find it's better just to let a tweet, a tweet, a tweet just kind of, you know, just float and loft around and let let people who follow me come in. What I didn't expect to happen was half of Spain to come in <laughs> and start yelling at this woman in English, Spanish, and English, you know, like half, half the half. But the does, does she not Spanish. know that the national food of Spain is jamón? Right. You know how many times that was mentioned? And by the way, do you know how they say ha 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 on Twitter in Spanish? No. J A J A J A J A J A. I know that. <laughs> That's super cute. Yeah, they all do. They all do that. And Ibiza. Like, not not 20, 30. Oh, no, that's my Spanish way, accent. Serena lived, Serena lived in Spain for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, Baja yeah. de la Catalunya. She speaks Baja Ramon. Serena speaks Spanish better than English. You yeah. know, it's like, don't get me started on Spanish. They came in. I've never seen a group of people come in. And this woman started arguing with people who were living in Spain, telling them that they were wrong. And as a matter of fact, other vegans came in to help her. That's the other thing that happens when they can't handle it by themselves. They'll recruit a few of the, the people from the, the tribe. And those people started talking about how the Spaniards only eat vegetables and largely plant based. It was the most laughable thing I've ever seen on Twitter. You, folks, if you if you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me for a couple of minutes. This is on we're doing this on what day? Uh, the 12th. May 12th. Okay. This started on May 10th, May 10th and 11th. By the time you hear this is going to be Monday, the 16th. So if you join me on Twitter, go back to last week and start reading this. The truth is stranger than fiction. I am not making this up. We had vegans in the United States explaining to Spaniards that from Spain, Mm -hmm. that they're wrong about what they eat. They don't actually eat what they say they eat. By the way, I ended up having to block the vegans because it was cluttering up my... Um, By the way, we do try... I, I, You know, I use blocking very much as a last resort. You know, if somebody's being a complete jerk or whatever, I'll do it. But right. I, I really am like, you can... Free speech, I don't really care. But then when somebody becomes like... <laughs> crazy well when they start into major ad hominem and you know that kind of thing i just go okay enough i'm bored and but i i let all i i can see all the other conversation where these people are going but i live in spain i'm spanish and you got to go read it to believe it i will i will well can i just jump into a question from a listener that's kind of multi-layered and it might take the rest of this show oh boy from tim Tim, mm -hmm. is this my new Tim? The guy does no. It's, I think it's a different Tim. I'm not sure. I know. I, I think it's a different Tim. Different last okay. name. Is uh, <clears throat> fleeing, fleeing 400 is my new favorite guy. Sorry, Scott. Yeah, you're out. I have a new one. So I can Scott remember. King, you just got replaced. Yeah. Um. Scott, there's fewer letters in Tim, and it's one syllable. You're out. Sorry. You had a good. I. Movie. OK, let's see. <clears throat> By the way, we have I, I and I'm getting I get so many messages every day and I can't keep up with them anymore. Like I'm trying to save things to ask you on podcasts. I'm trying to like respond to people, but I can't get to everything. So right. I used to be able to reply to all messages. I'm sorry if I'm not replying to messages now. I get 
DMs on all the socials. It's but this one I did manage to have a second to copy and paste into my Anna's become anything. famous, folks. She can't keep up anymore. If you remember, I was famous before there was social media, so I didn't have to deal yeah. with this shit. Yeah, but you know, when you had your old kind of fame, you didn't yeah. have to talk to fans, right? Right. Now it's different. I didn't I didn't really understand it. Like if yeah. I had known that Tony Hawk tweeting my stuff out all the time was like a big deal. Right. Back when the Twitter started, I probably would have like been smarter about it. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. No, no, that, that, there's a lot of that where we just didn't get it. Like I thought twi when, when Serena goes, you're on Twitter now. I was like, I don't even know what that means. I still don't know what happens to my tweets after I write them. Do you do you realize that? I only know how to go to <laughs> You only know how to go to your app mentions. No, I go to here. I'm going to tell you what I go to. I, I'm, I, I have to look it up. I go to where the little bell is. Yeah, that's it. That's the notification slash app mentions. Yeah, and I just read through those and uh, and I just go from there. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I just go to that and I just look at them and I answer everyone's questions and people go, man, you answer everyone's questions like, well, they took the time to write to me. And I think it's just good measure for me to write back, right? It's a nice thing to do. Here's another Oh, sp the Spaniards are still in there. They're going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're still they're going, going loco. Yeah, as they would call it. Ja, 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 ja. All right. Ja, 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 ja. <laughs> <laughs> I get the JS. I love that you think it's ja, 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 ja. Yeah, I know it's an age, but I was just I gonna... know, but it's Cha, 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 cha. Like I see Vinny's wheel spinning. Yeah. Is this okay, here we go. Here's a question from Tim. Okay, Tim. 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 He wrote to me at my site um, and he said, Anna, I've been listening to you and Vinny since I heard Vinny on the micro podcast. Quick question. I know his program is not a, and he puts this in quote, quote, quotation marks, diet. And there are no do's and don't lists. I understand about no sugars and why I have a biomedical science background. So understand the hormones y'all talk about. My question is about fruits. I know they have sugars, but I can't give them up. I'm giving up my breads, grains, cakes, cookies. Oh, sorry. He said Cokes, candies, pastas, and all the other quote, good stuff. I can't stop fruits too. Question is how much is too much? And is there a time period before or after a fatty protein meal that I should want, wait to avoid the insulin triggering the body to store the excess fat from the meat I have begun to eat more? Thanks in advance. Okay. I'm reading that as is. I was not trying to interpret what he was asking. So okay. a little convoluted at the end, Tim, but I understand you're trying to pack all your questions in and hopefully we're going to get to all of it. All right. Let me start with sugar. So there's fruit. And what that means, there's... Can we food combine and have the fruit with some fatty meals? Does that okay? I think that's what he's getting at. And I get it. Before an alcoholic decides to give it up to a higher power. And I'm an atheist, you know, folks, if you don't know that, I'm an atheist. And I've always said the reason I can never become an alcoholic is because I would have trouble with the higher power concept. But for people to save their lives from alcoholism, the ism, they have to give it up to a higher power. Before they do that, before they get to that rock bottom, where they just go, hands up, I'm done, I don't know what else to do. They make deals with themselves, right? All sorts of deals. I'm gonna I'm gonna make up some I, I know some alcoholics, right? <clears throat> that got cured by going through step 12 step programs. I, mm -hmm. I have friends that have 30 plus years as with 17, 18 years, that kind of thing. And I'm infinitely curious about alcoholism, the ism of it, because I deal with people with sugar addiction. Uh, I admittedly have a sugar addiction, right? Right. Um, before they get to that higher power and just throw their hands up and go, I'm powerless over this problem, they make deals. I will only drink on the weekends. 
I will only drink beer. Because, right. You know, I really like hard liquor, I'll, so I will only. I'll drink keep beer. it under control. I swear. This time, I will not get let it get away from me. I will only have two. I will never drink while I'm driving anymore. You know, whatever, whatever the deal, they, they start making deals. Another deal, um, an alcoholic friend told me to made was, hey, I get all my work done. That's called a functioning alcoholic. Mm-hmm. As long as I get all my work done, who cares if I drink? Right? The same thing with sugar. You could sit there and make deals with yourself and go, okay, okay, Vinny, I did this. I listened to you. I read your PDF. I'm, I, I've given up little Debbie's. I've given up ice cream. I, you know, the pint every night. I've given up. What, what do people eat? M and M's. I've given up Coke, Diet Coke. I've given. Now you're telling me I have to give up my fruit. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> Doctor Eric Westman, who was in both of my first two movies, mm-hmm. Fatter Documentary and Fatter Documentary Two. He has a clinic uh, over at Duke, Duke University, and he works with morbidly obese people and he takes them off of sugar. He has a sign hanging in his clinic that says, fruit is nature's candy. Mm. Now, let me explain what that means. I'm not going to leave it at that. When you dehydrate a fruit, now you're just bringing it down to almost table sugar. Uh, Raisins come to mind, right? where you've taken out all you you've dehydrated all the water, you just have a little crumpled piece of fiber full of sugar. Sugar turds, as we like to call them. Mm -hmm. Um, Dates, dates are just full of sugar. These are high sugar, pineapple, papaya, any of these tropical fruit, bananas, very high in sugar, right, is going to cause the same kind of reaction if you're metabolically broken, that you're going to get from from anything like ice cream or candy bars or anything else. So by you you get how I'm saying you're like an alcoholic making deals with yourself. Okay, I've given up everything else, I'm gonna still have this. If you notice in my PDF, I hate when people say, well, you allow, I don't, I don't fucking allow anything. I don't. You That's not the right allow. word you're saying. Allow is not the right word. You're choosing what to eat. I put what the truth is on that PDF. You want to have fruit? Stick to low glycemic index fruits. Berries. That would include, uh, include um, berries, tomatoes, avocados, olives, and cherries in season. Okay? Now... I mean- would argue only have berries in season too, because they honestly don't taste good out of season. So why bother? Right, well, because they're coming from Chile and everywhere else. They pick them when they're still green and they refrigerate them and then they try to reconstitute them. So Anna is absolutely right. Here's the deal. People go, Vinny says you're going to have berries and then berries become an every night thing. And then they start going, Hmm, if I mix berry with heavy whipping cream, I can whip it up. And then put the berries in there. Okay, that's that's even better. Hmm, if I put it in the freezer for a minute, it's more like ice cream. Did Vinny say anything about allulose? I know he doesn't like it, but I'll put a little allulose in there. Oh my God, this is really good. Before you know it, you're eating around what you really want to eat. Right. You have the same problem. So berries are there as an occasional thing. Cherries are there as an occasional thing. Have all of the avocados you want, all of the olives you want. You can have tomato on occasion. It's fine. Hell, Anna makes products with tomato. I love them. I use them. I use them in my meat all the time. Right? So we we didn't get into trouble eating tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. Tomatoes aren't the problem. So yeah, that you know, you've punched your card on things you can have, right? Now, right. Let's say you're metabolically broken, like my new best friend, Tim, who's near 400 pounds. Right. I would, if Tim was calling me for a phone chat and the whole thing, I would be telling him, no berries for you at all. You've punched your card on sugar. We need to get your A1Cs below 5.6. You're metabolically broken. You probably have fatty liver disease. We can find out from a blood test, but if you don't have it, I'm going to go ahead and assume 
if you triglycerides in the four, five, six hundreds, I need to get those below 100. Let's stay off of all fruit for a while. And the while might be two, three, four months, right? Let's get you fixed. I'm doing that with my buddy Doug right now, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it's I'm talking to him. Yeah, I have him texting me every day, and we talk two or three days a week. And he's finally doing it. It's an addiction, man. It's tough. It's really rough. And for some people, they'll say, "In the phone, I'm, I'm going by the phone calls, Anna. This is the only thing I can go by because these are the only people I talk to." They'll say, "What about alcohol?" Right. So I'm taking. I'm taking. Who, who wrote this? Who wrote this tweet? Tim, it wasn't a tweet, it was a message. A message. So Tim, I was talking about my other friend, Tim, the 400 pound Tim. Everyone's Tim. Everyone's I know, this is a different Tim. This is Tim yeah. F. Yeah, we have two Tims. And by the way, we did discuss this in the NSNG 101s pretty much at length, those two Friday yeah. shows from about, about a month or so ago. So good, comprehensive, go back and listen to everybody who's new. Well, look, reinforcing this stuff is always good. Yeah. So, um, Let's say I was talking to Tim on the phone. And he was saying to me, hey, man, all right, yeah, I can give up the fruit, but I've already given up my beer and my wine. My wife likes wine, the whole thing. Can I have alcohol? The answer is yes. But here's the thing. If this Tim is metabolically broken, fatty liver, alcohol is not going to help that. A1Cs off the charts, alcohol is not going to help that. Triglycerides, alcohol, sleep apnea, alcohol. Alcohol, by definition, is poison. Now people go, well, Vin, you drink alcohol. Yes, I do. You know, once, twice a week. Anna, you bought a bottle of scotch for me. What year was that? Which birthday was that? It was my 40th. So that was nine years ago because I just had a birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks. How many scotch is left in that bottle? The, almost the exact same. <laughs> yeah. How many scotch did I drink at your party on your 40th birthday? Like one. One. See, so well, maybe one and a half because it was a crazy 40th. Yeah, I want to I want to look I want to feel social. I want to look social. I want to enjoy. Right. Uh, a friend comes over on Friday night. We sit down. I pour a scotch. I pour one for myself. Sometimes on Friday or Saturday nights, I'm getting ready to start my evening of tweeting. I'll even take a picture of what I'm drinking. You pretty much what's in that glass is what I'm going to consume. Sometimes I don't finish it. Alcohol, by definition, is poison. Okay, when you're metabolically broken, you need to maybe think about that for a bit. I know this all seems like tough love. I, I get it. I, I really do get it. It, it. it it hurts. And I get that you've been through every other fucked up program. And when I say fucked up, I really mean it. You know, Weight Watchers for years, I don't know if they push this crap anymore. But it was like, hey, you have points. You could save all of your points all day and have six brownies every evening. Well, is that any way to do anything? You're using all your points all day long to have fucking brownies. Yeah. Sorry, I'm cursing a lot here, but it, it really does. Uh, yeah. I get upset, right? Well, and what was the other diet? Hang on, Anna. The other diet, uh, two sensible shakes. No, no. Nutrisystem. Wait. Two shakes and a sensible meal every night. Yeah. And the meal they always showed was a sad salad with iceberg lettuce and like, a sensible Chicken breast. <laughs> what does that mean? A sensible meal? You know what I think is sensible? I don't know. A half gallon of ice cream. Can I have that? See, they don't tell you what it is. And they don't tell you they're not teaching you how to eat. They're saying have our chem chemical shit storm twice a day, and then go do whatever you think is sensible. Well, if you knew what was sensible, Which, by the way, you'll be starving by dinner not to begin with. We right. don't know what's sensible. I said this in my first movie, I read it off of a list. Right. It says you can have I think it was like 22 different carbohydrates in a day. Right. If you look at the pyramid, look at what's on the pyramid right, and you look at the servings, up. you add up all the servings you can have. Was it 11 or 21 or 22? I can't remember. I would have well, to start with the and six then, to 11 at the bottom of the pyramid. Right. So I think it comes to like 20 servings of carbs per day of servings. And then you have to ask yourself, as I said in the movie, what's a serving? Right. What's the serving? Because guess what you can't find? You can't find that information because it's not on the pyramid. So it's almost like they're actively keeping you ignorant. And by they, I mean the government. And by the way, I'm not a government conspiracy guy. I'm just telling you this is what goes on. 
If they wanted you to know what those numbers were, they would put the serving right next to it on the pyramid. There's room to put a no. number. But here's the problem. If you do that, the average person would look at that and go, wait a minute. I would need four stomachs like a cow. I would have to be regurgitating cut to, to, to do this, right? I would have to be chewing my own cut all day long to get my stomach to eat what you want me to eat on that pyramid. And you cannot do it. You cannot do it. You will get fat. You will get fatty liver disease. You will get sleep apnea and you will be sick. So, well, the conspiracy part of me thinks that because the government does raise, and this is not conspiracy, this is fact that you can see, the, the government uh, and candidates and on both sides raise an incredible amount of money from different lobbies, the sugar lobby, the grain lobby. There are tons of others right. that could be questionable in nature, but those are the two we're focused on here in this work. Them raising all that money, it could be that they don't necessarily even want to define what a serving is per well, se. They can't. They can't. It, by the way, no, they've defined it. Yeah. You can find that. I looked it up before the movie. Like a half a cup of rice is the serving okay. or something pre-cooked or uncooked right, rather. So you, you know, on the bottom of the pyramid, can you pull yeah. up the pyramid? Pull up the pyramid. It's, it's six to 12, six to 11 servings of grains, whole grains. All right. So on the bottom, so you can have up to 11. So let's take the, the maximum that you can have. It's on the bottom, right? Right. Does it say six to 11 on the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Let's take 11. Oh, wait, hold on. Not the one I pulled up. Pull up the actual pyramid. I'm going to do the math over the here. The actual pyramid. I mean, there's like a million pyramids. Well, find find the most recent pyramid. I think on the bottom, it's 11 servings. Maximum. Let me know when you have it. Bread, rice, cereal, pasta, six to 11 servings. Okay. Fruit, two to four. Vegetable, three all to right, five. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, all right wait. So, all right, so give me the bread, rice, pot, g g give me those again. Six to 11. All right, so I'm going to put 11 because that's the maximum because you can have as many as 11. Now go to the next one. Fruit group, two to four. All right, so four is the, the, the maximum, right? Yep, vegetable group, three to five. So five is the maximum, right? Yep, so now we're up to 20. We're up to 20. And then we got meat, poultry, fish, dry beans, eggs, nuts, two to three. Okay, so beans is in there. That's another carbohydrate. So let's call right. that one. Let's give that one. Milk, yogurt, cheese group, two to three. Okay. But I just, I just want the carbohydrates there. So I was right. It's 20. It's 21. Yeah. Yep. It's 21. It's 11, four. That's 15. But then there's this one that says the USDA food pyramid is now a plate. Okay, yeah, that's when they did my plate and they, did, they, they, they tried to change it. All right, so... <laughs> we we have 20 servings, Anna, 20 Lord. servings. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> They're Lord. telling you 20 th servings of carbs per day. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you what a serving is. No. If I remember right, it's... But aren't we supposed to be looking on the back of the packages for what the serving is? No, but they, they if you go into, you can really find it. It's somewhere like four or five ounces per serving. So let's call it four. I don't want to overdo it, right? Okay. Okay, so um, so let's say four times four ounces of twenty one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's eighty four ounces of grains per day. Eighty four <laughs> ounces. Now turn turn ounces into grams for me, Anna. If you can do oh, that. What? Yeah, I'll do it. Like. <laughs> Hold on. Ounces to grams. How many? 84? Mm -hmm. That's 2,381 grams. That's what they want you to have per day. So that's two that, that's kilograms. The, that, that's the max. Two and a half kilograms. That's the right? maximum. Isn't Look. a kilogram a, a thousand but, but grams? Do you think that someone actually thought about this pyramid? Do you think anyone actually thought about this? That would be a, yeah, that, a and 2200 kilogram 22 2.2 kilograms is a pound right so they basically they want to eat you to eat a pound of grains per day, a day. Or, or, or carbohydrates a day a day every day 
And uh, let's see, a pound says 360 pounds, 65 pounds per year of discard. Anyone else do this math? Well, I, the grain Anyone companies else? would be very happy if that happened because they'd sell a lot of product. Right. They want you to eat, like, like I said, you would have to have, before I started this conversation, I said you would have to have four stomachs. You, you would have to be regurgitating your cud. And by the way, I know what I just did, folks. I'm not an idiot. I did the maximum of everything. Do me, you, you want to do, you want me to do your favorite? Let's cut it in half. Half of 84 is what, 42? Do 42. What is that in grams, Anna? Let's cut it in half. It would be 1,300, let's say. 1,300 grams. It's still a half a pound of grains. But let me get, can I get back on track with Tim's question, which is, why can't he have fruit? He's specifically hanging on to fruit. And by the way, I'm used, Tim, you asked the question, so you're going to, It's this is going to be focused to you, but this is literally everybody's question. We get this question so much about fruit. And, and I just want to be really clear that it's not like fruit needs to be demonized. It's just that fruit is fructose and it is going to spike your blood sugar and cause the insulin resistance and do all the things. That being said, if you will just stop eating the fruit for a little while, people find they can add the berries back in when they're in season. Or for example, in peach season, which is August here in the US, once or twice, I'll have a peach or two. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. And then it's over. And it's like, oh, I enjoyed that. Right. You know what I mean? And it doesn't right. haunt me anymore. It's not like something where I'm like, oh, I got to have the thing. And by the way, the last, the very last recipe in the first Eat Happy is exactly what you describe. It's frozen strawberries, cream, and in the blender. And then you can put the dark, dark, you know, 90% chocolate chips right. in the thing. And it's like having an ice cream. Vinny, the last time I probably made that was 2014. Right. I don't need to make it anymore. Like a lot of the stuff in there is that kind of like transitional foods to get you guys going and to get you feel like you're not being deprived because I don't want you to feel deprived because if you feel deprived, you're going to go off plan and go on a bender. That's what happens. And let me go one step further. Um, someone sent me a thing today where, again, my friend Eric Westman, who we were talking about earlier, you know, they go, hey, what about Eric Westman telling people they can have fake sugars? Eric works with three, four, 500 pound people just like I do. OK, and he he talks about it. He goes, look, sometimes people need a bridge and <laughs> he does that. I prefer to get people off of it. We got to cut it. We got to cut it right. We need to nip it in the bud. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. He could be right. He says, look, this is a good this is a good gateway drug to get you off. It's kind of like putting people on methadone to get them off of whatever. What do you need methadone for? Heroin? Uh, Meth? No. One of those drugs. Oxy. So whatever, you know, it's like putting people in methadone. We're, we you know, don't know anything about drugs, obviously. Yeah, yeah just people are going, these idiots. I, but, well, I've only seen dope sick. I know, but, I know but, about but that. But you understand that that's what Eric is talking about. And people are going, oh, look, your guy, Eric Wilson. Yeah, look, I get it. And then I saw another one where Saladino is telling people, hey, you can have honey, honey. No, fucking honey is sugar. I know I'm cursing a lot today. I'm sorry. It's sugar. I'm passionate about this stuff, folks. That's why I get all worked up. You know, Paul Saladino, he was on your show. Now he's saying, honey, I don't care what he's saying. I'm telling you it's nice it's off the table. If you want to get better, none of that stuff is going to help you. And, if you and by the way, it, start taking heavy whipping cream, whip it up, put honey in it, whip it up, freeze it, start eating it every night and see where you end up. See where you yeah, oh, it won't work. It won't it work. It won't work at all. No, it's got to be it's got to be a literally a once a once in a while treat. It's got to be. I don't I don't even go for that. So, you understand fruit off the table for you for now. Once you fix yourself, Tim, once you fix yourself, then you can go back to it. So, can when he goes back to it, <clears throat> isn't it smarter for him to eat it? at the end of a very fatty meal, as opposed to eating I, it. I, I prefer bone. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, eating it, um, eating it by itself will cause more of an insulin reaction, especially if you were metabolically broken at one glucose point. spike and insulin yeah, it, you'll get more of a spike. So if it's at the end of a meal and you want to have a couple of bites or something like that, that's when you do it. Uh, one of the things Serena will do, and it, you want to talk about honey, it tastes like honey. Um, and, we every we bring out the charcuterie board, 
right? Um, mm -hmm. Once a week, we're sitting around the table, we have a big steak dinner, you know, we do a thing where we buy the world's biggest porterhouse and we split it, you know, yeah. that way, that each person gets some of the fillet, and you each person gets some of the good fatty part on the other side. And um, she'll make my favorite salad with a bunch of avocados and olives in there and, 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 and Villa Capelli olive oil and all of it just all mixed together and salt and pepper. Mm. And we'll do that kind of thing. And then she'll, you know, if we have guests over or something, right? And when guests come over, I serve wine. I'm not the guy who goes, hey, look, we don't even drink this, you know, here's, I serve wine, right? So you're sitting around a table and they're having wine. I'm having my coffee or a different drink or whatever. And we bring out the charcuterie board. You know, we, we love our cheeses around here. There's a bunch of different great cheeses, Embarico and Manchego and, uh, you know, all, all the good stuff with, with, oh, the stinkier, the better for me. And Serena will do a thing where she'll put a pear or an apple on that board. And her thing is to take a sliver, you know, a piece of cheese with a sliver of the pear or apple. When, when you're not used to eating sugar, putting that in your mouth, you feel like someone put a spoon of sugar in your mouth. It's delicious. That's how I enjoy fruit. And it's, it's on occasion, people go, you never Yeah, no. On occasion, in moderation, you must have but you're also not metabolically broken, right? I've said that a gazillion times. Well, when I know we're going to keep saying it because I keep getting messages going. Like, for example, in the second book, there's a pork chops with a, you cut up an apple and you basically blast it in the instant pot with the pork chops and onions. Right. And um, because, as you know, pork goes very well with apple or plum. Right. Right. And um, and I think it really confuses slash flummoxes people. Why would you do that? Well, first of all, I'm putting the whole thing in there. I'm not putting juice. So right away. And second of all, you're eating fatty pork chops with a bunch of fat on it. So you're putting it in the thing. Now, I, if you're making that every night just so you can suck the sweetness of an apple off the thing, right? we have a problem. Right. That is That's what I'm saying. So you know deep in your heart of hearts if you're lying to yourself. Just like the alcoholic knows, you know, I just have two beers. And then the moment you reach for that third beer, you've broken that promise to yourself and you know, there's a problem, you know, it, yeah. whether or not you are ready to admit it to yourself, you know, it. Absolutely. But this is the thing because Vinny and I can't tell you what to eat and what not to eat. You have to just try it and see what works for you. You have to try it and see, cut it, you know what I mean? Believe it. So Vinny can talk to you about his years of experience, but if you're determined to go, no, 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 I think fruit's okay with my body. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. And then you see what happens. That's right. all you can do is gather the data of your own body. Yeah. With, with some, some guidelines and some suggestions, but like you always say, Vinny, people call with the quote unquote plateaus. I know you don't like that word, but people call with that. And it always kind of comes down to the same thing. Like, well, this guy, I started having this, I started having that, and I started having this. And, and they have the realization in, as they're talking to you, like, oh, I've been lying to myself. Yeah, and usually it's easy to figure it out. And look, a lot of people, when they call, um, you know, we have a big cry session. Yeah. Like they, 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 they're crying. They can't believe that they either got here or that they're losing weight now and they feel great and the whole thing. So sometimes I feel like, um, what's his name, also from New Orleans, um, Richard Simmons, you know, it's just a big old cry session. But you know, I'm not a, I'm not a hard ass on these phone calls, man, I'm I'm there to help people and to do what I can. And, right. um, you know, if you sit there and go, Hey, man, I've cut everything out, I have to have fruit. It's like, I use it, I use this example all the time, you know, if a couple is trying to get pregnant, and they go to the doctor, and the doc and the, the fertility doctor, right? And the doctor's like, he checks the woman, he goes, Well, you're dropping an egg, and it's a healthy egg every month. And you're ovulating. Are you guys having a lot of sex right when you ovulate? Oh, doc, we're having sex like like rabbits. We're around the clock. And then he checks the guy and the guy has more sperm like the Mark Spitz of, of, of sperm, right? <laughs> the strongest swimmers he's ever seen. And, and the doctor's just confused. And, it, and then he turns to the woman again, and he goes, When did you go? You're off of your birth control, right? 
yeah, yeah, doctor, I went off six months ago, and you're still not getting pregnant. And they're confused. And the doctor goes, well, he's got strong swimmers. They're having sex when she's ovulating. They're fucking like rabbits. They're doing all this stuff. And the doctor's just got a big question mark on his face. And then the guy goes, hey, doc, you think I should take my condom off when we have sex? You see, it's like that. You could do almost everything right. But if, you, if you're not doing, if you don't take the condom off, you're never going to get pregnant. Well, let me ask you something. Because this actually brings up a thing because, you know, like like you were saying earlier, we talk to people in our everyday lives. Right. 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 And I, and I get a lot of calls from friends, family members. So a relative of mine who is a postmenopausal woman. Said. And by the way, has told me over the years, I could never do NSNG. I could never do it. I could never do it. And I finally learned from you and going, OK, no problem. But I know that she's really struggled. She's been very inflamed. She has to have a lot of surgeries. And uh, it's, it's a struggle in her day-to-day -day life. She suffers a lot physically. And um, so, and I know she does not listen to this podcast, although she is in my Facebook group. And people jumped on her about having a Diet Coke. And I was like, settle down. This is my relative. We, we're on, we're filming video, you know. I know, but. I just put up one ladder. That's not good. Um, I don't think. It... No. Oh, no, no, no. This is a relative of mine. This is. um. <laughs> yeah, I know who you're talking about. This is a relative of mine. Uh, I was just wondering. This, this is my aunt. She doesn't listen to the show. I can just say okay. it's my aunt. But she said to me, and this is where I get confused because I, I don't I don't want to. OK, she said. I've been doing it for the past two to three weeks or whatever it was. This is a while ago. It was a few months ago. I've been doing it for a while. I, NSNG, I did it. And mm -hmm. I, I dropped all these pounds. And the only thing I'm missing is crunchy foods. I'm, I'm missing is crunchy, missing crunchy foods. And if you could give me a suggestion about that. And uh, of course I did. I called her and said, make some cheese crisps. Use your Eat Happy Kitchen spices on the cheese crisps. And um, I said, you could have some nuts, but you don't want to overdo it with the nuts. So... You don't overdo it with the cheese grips either, but that might give you that feeling of like missing crunch, you know, and every, and everybody hates it when I say cut up some radishes and dip them in the, <laughs> they're always like, fuck off radishes, radishes, but you, you they are crunchy. I enjoy them. Anyway, make some guacamole and dip some radishes in there, but nobody likes to hear that. So cheese crisps and nuts it is. So she said, I've been eating a lot of bananas. And then I, I know you've had this experience where people say, I've been doing NSNG, and then they say something that's completely not NSNG, and you're like, oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> I didn't Anna, know what to say. I was like, okay. I said, that's great that you were able to eat all those bananas and still lose weight, which makes me think to myself, I'm not a doctor at all, but it makes me think, she must have been so inflamed and her body was so relieved. That, that's, exa that's exactly. To not have take out food, sugars and grains, seed oils, that eating, even still eating bananas, she's still dropping and weight. You start cutting out Doritos and packaged food. And you know, when I say packaged food, I mean like, you know, uh, it, you know any kind of- I think she did a lot of takeout. Oh, I think that was, and takeout okay. can really do damage. Takeout is really bad. You'll lose, so, you'll still lose a lot of inflammation, but then when you get down to, when you get it down to the quick, that's it. Now you have to really pay attention. Now you got to cut the banana. So I said to her, I said, hey, listen, that's great. And she goes, well, I've, been, I've just been so hungry. Bananas are the only thing that keep me full. And I said, okay, well, how about, why don't we try? Do you like olives? Yes. Why don't you try some olives for a snack? Um, do you like nuts? Why don't you try a handful of nuts? Why don't you try some salami? Why don't you try? Because what we want to do is get you to a place where you're fat adapted and you won't need to have a snack all day, every day. Because of course the bananas are keeping her on the insulin glucose cycle. She's never going to get fat adapted if she's eating bananas all day. And so that to me kind of perfectly explains how somebody too could go plant-based and lose weight right away because they're just have cut out some, a lot of processed stuff. Right. But then eventually things start to plateau. So I said, but eventually maybe you try to not have the bananas and she heard it. I think she heard it and then was kind of like, I need to do what I need to do. And I agree. You do what you need to do. I am just here to offer some perspective. That's all I can do. I can't create in your experience. I can't get inside your body and pick things when it's time to eat. 
I can't do that. Right. I can just offer up my recipes and give, here are my books. Here's, I have hundreds of free recipes. I've got the sub sec. I got the things I can just be a resource. That's all I can do. I'm not a doctor and I'm not you. I cannot choose for you, but has that's, I'm sure this must happen to you where people are like, I'm doing NSNG, but I'm having seven oh. bananas a day. <laughs> You're oh, like, wait, what? Hold on. All stop. The, you know, look, I, I told the story years ago about the couple who lost like 20 or 30 pounds. The wife lost it. The husband lost it. And they stopped dry. And when she called me and told me that she kept going through her diet over and over and over and her husband's, and it was, it was better than what I eat. I mean, it was like, I, I would have, I was like, wow, they, they, they're doing this better than me. And on lap number three, she just happened to mention, she goes, yeah, I get home from work at 4.30. My husband gets home from work at 5.30. We both work really hard. And we really love sitting on a porch. And we don't like to eat until later. And we love cooking together. And um, so we share a bottle of wine, you know, before dinner. And, um, you know, so we have that. And then we go in and we start the cooking process at around 7, 7.30. And then we crack open another bottle of wine and we have that with dinner. And then we finish off the night finishing up another. So they were each having a bottle of wine per night. Now, some people could do that and not be alcoholics. That's fine. But they were consuming. <laughs> Who are those people? That's a uh, lot of alcohol. Th th that's what they were enjoying every night. And um, is it because your tolerance gets so high, you don't even realize you're drinking yeah, that yeah, much? Yeah, yeah, that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean you're an alcoholic by any stretch. Um, but the bottom line is they they were drinking each a lot of sugar and they lost the initial weight. And then that was keeping them right there. Right. right? And, by and, the did way, they, and did they cut back and then drop more weight? Yeah, um, uh, I think what they did was they went to one bottle, you know, per night. Yeah. And uh, I don't so you're know. You're saving a lot of money. Yeah, Hello. a lot of money and um, whatever. But this was their thing. They'd done that for years. And look, I wish Serena and I loved each other that much where we sat around and just talked about our day. For, I was like, I was listening to her going. You guys, are, you guys need to settle down, okay? You You're making the rest of us look bad. You guys, no, but, are, you guys have been doing this for a minute. Well, and also, too, when you talk about glucose spikes, if you're sitting down having the wine first before you even eat anything. Right, 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 right. And, and they, and um, uh, yeah, they got it moving again. I can't remember what happened to them after that. I would be remiss if I made it. Anna, can, can I brag about your rubs and all your I would stuff. Love, I would love for you to do that. And then I have to do a, a radio commercial. Okay. Um, first off, um, the barbecue sauce. We we put that on fish. I think I told you that. Oh, the barbecue right? dust, the rub? Yeah, yeah, the dust. Yeah. We, we mm -hmm. put that on fish. I, not yes. we, Serena did. I didn't <laughs> know she did. And the fish was, it was salmon. And yes. it was fabulous. It, it was just unbelievable. But... Um, I do what I call an unconstructed hamburger where I'll take like a pound of hamburger meat and just do ground beef in, in, you know, I don't make a patty out of it. I just do the ground beef, beef loose. Yeah. And I'll chop up some, um, a, a pickle and I'll chop up some tomato. And, and then when, when I take the hot beef out of the pan, I'll put some cheddar cheese on that to make it taste or whatever and make it taste like a, a cheeseburger an unconstructed cheeseburger. It's got a little tomato a little pickle. Well, I do that all the time. But I went, let me add Anna's dust in here because it's sitting right there on the counter, right? So I added the dust. It tasted like a better cheeseburger. So now I have another level to my cheeseburger there just by adding some of your dust while I'm making the ground beef. But here's where the big win came for me is do you call it ranch dust? The dill. I call it the dill. Okay. Dill ranch seasoning. Yeah. I've done two things with that. That have, I, I can't get enough of it. So um, I had a, I'm with I you. Had, I had four or five extra boiled eggs towards the end of the day. Serena was going off to Washington, D.C. because they were doing that Ragmaninoff thing. They had one more choir to do in D.C. I was left to my own devices. And I, I made a dozen eggs that morning. I only ate like, you know, five or six of them. I had five left, right? And um, so I took them, I peeled them, and I quartered them, and I put them in a, you know, in a bowl. And I was just going to put salt on them and do some. But what I did was I put a dollop of 
creme fraiche on that. And then sprinkle. I did add a little salt. I put a little salt. Redmond's real salt. And then I took your dust and put and mixed it all in. It was the best version <gasps> of a um, egg salad I've ever had. It was a dill egg salad. Okay, this is what I need to make on a live Vinny's egg salad. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Now, I was so inspired by that. The next morning, I was making myself a chili cheese, uh, not the next morning, two mornings later, I was making myself a chili cheese omelet. Now, Serena makes, you know, with the ground beef, she'll make me a chili, right? That's okay. very NSNG. And then we'll have extra. So it's sitting in the fridge, it's just ground beef with chili powder in it and the whole thing. And she juices it up somehow. And so I'm making my my four egg omelet. And I got cheese in the middle and I got it perfect. Yum. And um, I put my chili on top, you know, the beef chili. And uh, I said, you know what? Take that creme fraiche. I put a little bit in the bowl and I, I did the dust again. I did the salt with it, whipped it up really fast and put that over the chili. So I got mm. a chili cheese omelet with the creme fraiche. I usually put creme fraiche in my chili cheese omelet. Yeah, yeah. To cool it off. Yeah, it's, it was, it added a layer of complexity that you don't get in fine restaurants. So bravo. That's awesome. Rudy Clapp. Hey. Anna, I, I, thank I, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It um, was worth the 18 months. Anna, don't, don't, don't tell people where they can find that stuff. If you go to eathappykitchen.com, you can get it. And Vinny, you'll like this and you'll be getting this in the mail next week. Well, actually this week, because this comes out on Monday. Um. My guy is making the spicy arrabbiata mm. uh, marinara on Saturday. So this will have already been made when this thing comes out. And uh, the spicy is will be up for sale. We're only making one kettle. I'm not doing a whole big order. Just did one kettle, um, less than 500 jars. So if you want it, grab it, claim it, eathappykitchen.com. So thanks, Vin. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. And I will, I'll make the, the egg salad thing because people are wanting to know more recipes. I post recipes at my sub stack. There's a ton of recipes already about how to use the spices. And then, you, you know, we talk about it, all sorts of creative ways to use the spices because I want y'all to use them and will, order more. I will tell you this. The first time I did it, I used too much creme fraiche. It was too... It was too gooey. I found that less is more with the creme fraiche. Okay. And I but still put the same amount of dust because you need to cover all those eggs and everything else. Um, but I, I I made it too too goofed up the first time. I've made it like six times since. It's become. Let me tell you something, Vinny. You're gonna like this. Mm. So you know how you go to the store and your creme fraiche is in like a flat disc, like an eight ounce thing. That's correct. Yeah. Right. Get two of those next time you go to the store. Okay. Okay. And in one of them, take one tablespoon of the dill and put it in and whisk it up and put the cover on and put it back in the fridge. And then you have it ready to go. So one of them is a plain creme fraiche for when you need plain creme fraiche. And one of them is the dill already mixed up. You know what else? I might, you can scoop it on stuff. You know what else I might try it on? Uh, mascarpone, which is Italian creme fraiche. For, yeah. It's more of an axle grease of a creme fraiche. The other thing is if you get a whole, I've done a whole chicken now with all barbecue dust on it or all dill on it. It's fantastic. Both of them yeah. are great. When you just put a capelli on there and rub it in and then you roast the chicken, they're both really good. Like no, a ranch chicken I, or a barbecue chicken. You have knocked these things out of the park. I, I, I just can't thank you enough. They go on anything. It, it, that's the yeah. thing. And it, look, dudes, if you live in the Midwest, you know, they say if you want to get a girl to blow you in the Midwest, dip it in ranch. <laughs> this is true. And I've thought of using that on our marketing, much like your squeeze our nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But um, um, Thank you. And speaking of Villa Capelli, Villa yeah. Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. You guys need to get your hands on some. They are long term sponsors of this podcast. However, we've been talking about Villa Capelli long before they ever started paying us. And then Paul Capelli was like, I need to make this right and pay you guys. Um, it is truly. I don't, think, I don't think he paid us last month. <laughs> Did we get? Oh, it? really? Okay, I'll remind Stephen. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll text him. Um, yeah. I did hit a reminder, but I'll do him again. Okay, um, Villa Capelli, the best olive oil on the planet. 
they they have it in stock right now. They sell out very quickly. So I suggest if you see it on their website, you grab some, especially the three liter tin. You can trust their salts and their um, herbs. They have these pow- this powdered rosemary. Their garlic powder is insanely great. Buy their stuff. You're going to use it up. It goes great with my stuff. It goes great with Vinny's stuff. You're going to love it. Villa Capelli, you can go straight to their website or you can click the banner ad at vinnytortorich.com, but use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order each and every time. Make sure you get, they do free shipping, I think at like a hundred bucks. So make sure you do your order enough. So when they use the Vinny discount code to get your 10% off, you still get the free shipping. And Steven, I don't know if he hates that we say that, but we, I don't tell him that we say that. <laughs> but, yeah. But it's me. I like to, I like to game the system. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if you eat happy yeah. kitchen, you'll get free shipping. If you order a case of sauce, that's what they'll do free shipping for. Yeah. So I'm like, just do it. Just get the thing and get the free shipping. Cause it's really expensive to we ship like, a three liter like tin screw, of oil. We like to screw our friends best we can. Yeah, we do. Um, so go do all of that. You know what to do with me. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, please go to vinnytotters.com. Click through the banner. It puts a little coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track. We also have a super fan page. You can go there. Um, it's like PBS. You go there, you give us a couple of bucks and we can keep this show free. 